So in honor of Black History Month, I really want to talk to my people. So let's talk. Dear Black people, please, please, please seek therapy. Therapy is not a bad word. Therapy has become so stigmatized among the Black community. As a matter of fact, in the 2008 study, Black people thought that anxiety and depression and any mental health condition were viewed as crazy, quote, crazy among their circles crazy that is one of many reasons why therapy is so stigmatized in the african-american community in fact suicide is the leading cause of death based on the 2019 study of african-americans between 15 and 24 years old so your youth the ones that you're telling to just go away and hang out with their friends and figure it out. Those are the ones between the 15, 24 year old crowd that are hurting the most. They're hurting the most. So whatever advice that we want to give them, whether it's spiritual or natural or whatever you will, we need to invest time and mental health with our youth. Black people in general, but specifically our black youth. Listen, if you didn't hear what I had to say, a study based on just a few years ago between 15 to 24 year old black people, our black youth are killing themselves and rates higher than any other culture. That is a real thing, people. That is a real thing, family. We got to step it up and we got to invest in our black youth and we can't invest in our black youth if we're not investing in ourselves when it comes to mental health. It's, it's insane to me how uh, African-Americans are among the culture, uh, the ethnicity who is most reluctant to seek mental health. And that goes to my next point, dear black men therapy is not a sign of weakness it's a sign of strength speaking from the heart speaking from experience both personally and professionally it is not a sign of weakness it is a sign of strength there's been so many black males that's come to my office that were so reluctant and seeking mental health, seeking therapy, really addressing their mental health. They thought, you know, chin up, tough it up, buttercup. There's been so many things that we've been learned as a black community. As a matter of fact, I'll talk a little bit about this in a previous video. Mental illness is a sign of weakness. Chin up. You just need to be stronger. And here's the thing. I'm going to pause right here real quick because that alone has just totally infiltrated the black male demographic just without even a church uh, uh background just black males period <clears throat> especially particularly in the church but black males hear me out <laughs> hear me out seek therapy all right uh there's been so many black male clients i've had uh, in my sessions as a, as, a, as a therapist that was super duper reluctant to come to therapy. Uh, they were they were uh, basically told that they need therapy because of court things or uh, some some uh, uh, domestic issues, some family issues, some parenting issues, different reasons what lead them to therapy uh, or they felt like they just <laughs> reluctantly had no other choice. Uh, um, and so that stuff is so detrimental, so detrimental to us as black males. Okay. Particularly black male Christians and those people 
who came in my therapy, who came in my office, they were like, man, I don't, I was reluctant. They would tell me I'm reluctant. And all of them, after a session or two, and it's interesting, and this happens even like the first session, the first, first session. In the beginning, they're reluctant. They're like, oh, I'm okay. I'm all right. I don't, I don't need any help. And 45 minutes in, like the floodgates come out. I'll just pick those big, brawly black men apart. And then they'll end up just, just opening up the floodgates with sharing things. And stop it. Stop being so reluctant to seek therapy. Stop being so reluctant to think that chin up you just need to be stronger and unfortunately a lot of the church culture has created that type of mentality to people i don't need therapy it's a sign of weakness i always tell my clients therapy is a sign of strength not weakness there was a time in my life years ago where i was operating out of hurt i was i was this guy i, I was this guy i was this chin up guy i was like it was so integrated in my life years ago like i'm i'm cool you know i don't need i don't need therapy and 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 it was just eating me up inside that 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 thought process is so toxic it's so toxic for your own personal well-being we gotta stop the stigma of thinking that is a sign of weakness we think we'll get stigmatized if we're black men trying to seek therapy, it's a sign of weakness to so many people. But it's crazy because a lot of times it's in our minds because I've had people tell me that there's they were so reluctant in seeking therapy. But as a black man, as a black man, after seeking therapy, they were overwhelmed with the level of support that they receive from other black people. That goes to show that so much is up here that's causing us to think that it's weak, but you gotta step forward. You gotta break that threshold in your mind that mental health is a sign of weakness. No, it's a sign of strength. I tell this to my clients all the time. I say, everybody has problems. Thank you for admitting that you have some and willing to do the work to master over them, to take care of them, to teach others and encourage others to from your story and to seek mental health treatment for themselves. I find it so interesting that black men are so known to be athletes. We're quick to tell a doctor, a medical doctor, once we get something wrong with us, once we go to the hospital, we want to hurry up to the hospital. We want to hurry up to the ER. You want to hurry up to the medical facility to get treated for a physical condition. And we're as specific and detailed as possible to get back out into being physically fit and being going back out to that basketball court or going back out to that football field. But when it comes to mental health, we're reluctant because we look at it so stigmatized. We're crazy all of a sudden when we want to seek mental health. But physical health, oh yeah, hurry up. Get whatever you got to do to get back into that field. Get back into that basketball court. Come on, y'all. We got to understand that's an imbalance. Just as much as we seek physical health, it is just as imperative, and I would even say more imperative to seek mental health a physical scar if i broke my leg or or messed up my back that pales in comparison in many cases dare i say most cases than a abuse verbal or physical that i received 15 years ago that i've been holding on and haven't had any treatment for it if I'm coughing, if I'm feeling something in my gut physically, you better believe I'm going to the doctor for that. I want to find out what's going on. I don't know if it's cancerous. I don't know what the I don't know what the issue could be. I don't know. So I'm going to seek treatment for it. I'm going to seek help for it physically. But for some reason, a lot of us in our culture, a lot of us black people, 
we don't have the same thoughts when it comes to mental health. And that, my friends, is dangerous and super toxic. I'm not speaking for all, but the statistics show that we have a terrible, terrible, terrible problem in our hands with not seeking the proper mental health treatment that we need. And we're holding on much, much, much scars. In fact, there's a 2018 study that shows that black males are four times more likely to commit suicide than black females. Man, stop holding it in. Stop thinking you have to suck it up. Be vulnerable, seek therapy, and seek it fast. Your family, your friends, your church are depending on it. Very, very important, friends. That brings me to my third letter. Dear Black Christian, therapy and mental health issues should not be demonized in the church for so long you've seen pastors try to demonize mental health and in fact a 2015 study shows that the preacher is the main source for someone in the black church the preacher is known to be the main source of mental health therapy now, there are pastoral counseling. I've, I've taken pastoral counseling classes. I understand I, I, there's, there's great benefit in pastoral counseling. But do not put that much pressure on a pastor. It's out of their lane. Seek professional help. There's people who study thoroughly about the mind and the, the understanding of how the mind and the body works and understanding triggers and understanding traumas. There are people who do that professionally who spend years studying this. Myself, who understand that there is a vast difference in many cases between pastoral counseling and mental health treatment. Vast difference. And again, do not put that pressure, do not put that much pressure on the pastoral body. Don't do that. And pastors, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. If you know this, this issue, this thing is, is a deep-rooted mental health trauma that needs professional help, come on, sir. Stay in your lane. Refer them out, outsource them to mental health treatment outsource them to therapy don't be too proud and think that you can't handle it so let's figure it out let's try to let's try to figure it out because i'm your pastor come on come on it's not about you sir outsource it be wise and understand that things need professional counseling things need professional help deep-rooted professional mental health therapy. And there's a treatment that goes beyond pastoral counseling. And it's worth it. It's worth you swallowing your pride and outsourcing to professional counseling. That's why I absolutely commend every church that actually has lists of people who their particular members can go to for professional help. Bravo. I applaud you for that. Uh, the church oftentimes in the past, they akin mental health to a vice of the devil. This, my friends, <laughs> incredibly stigmatizes the, the purpose, the, the desire for the black church to seek mental health. Because for so long, it's been stigmatized as being demonic. If you're having mental health issues, you're straight up dealing with demons. If you have bipolar or borderline or uh, any type of depression or anxiety, it's straight up demonized. You got to pray it away. You got to pray it away. Got to take care of it. You don't need any mental health treatment. But what about the messed up leg? 
that you hit while you were practicing? Can you pray that away? Don't go to the doctor then. Don't go to the medical doctor. No, don't go to the medical doctor because the mental health doctor, the, the, the psychotherapist, the psychologist, uh, you know, those are, those are agents of Satan. You don't, you don't want to go to them because they're just going to tell you something that you don't need to know because you just need to pray it away, but keep that same energy when it comes to physical health. When there's a trauma, when you get into a car accident or when you witness someone getting killed when you were a kid or when you were a dog or when you witnessed uh, physical abuse when you were a kid within the confines of the household when it came to marriage, your, your parents, when someone abused you physically, when someone abused you mentally, it gets much deeper than just praying away. And guess what? God sends people to give you the tools to help you navigate through those things. It's ridiculous to me that it's an either or not a both end, as if God can't send people your way to help you navigate through the uh, through that from a spiritual standpoint, to use biblically based tools to help you from a therapeutic route. We got to do better, church. We got to do better, black people. We got to do better, y'all. So God bless y'all. Happy Black History Month, and let's help each other get better by seeking therapy. Love y'all. Peace.